And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. And guess who's in the Mighty 1090 studio with us? Mr. Ron Lane from Fast Lane Kayaks. We're going to have a great show talking kayak fishing, talking wahoo fishing, and more. You stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. This is Greg Stotes Bray from from AFCO. For over 20 years, AFCO has been known for its traditional fishing shorts. We now will also be known for our new line of next generation fishing and board shorts. Our new M82 tactical fishing shorts feature quick dry, high tech, two way stretch fabric, zipper fly, six functional pockets plus pliers pocket, sublimated camo print, and our DWR finish so your shorts don't get stained. Also new to the AFCO line are the M25 Stingray board shorts. The Stingray board shorts feature new quick dry four-way mind stretch fabric modern zipper fly two technical high cargo pockets with inverted zippers silicone printed draw cords along with our dwr finish to repel stains both shorts are new to the afco line and come in a variety of colors and sizes these technically advanced fishing and board shorts continue afco's long tradition of providing the world's finest fishing and board shorts. Check them out today at Better Shops Everywhere. Saturday, November 7th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Our largest sale ever. Seminars by saltwater experts and incredible deals on tackle. Over 20 tackle manufacturers like Shimano with great products like Talica, Tranks, Trinidad A, and Terramar. Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 7th. Check saltwatertackle.com. My angler h 2 o like the mighty flounder, I will keep one eye on the pole and the other watching for rogue waves. I'll save water by taking shorter showers and enthusiastically celebrate talk like a pirate day. Aye. I will chat up the locals before launching in unfamiliar waters. And I will always, always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. The summer fishing season this year was nothing short of incredible, and everyone I talked to is expecting continued success well into the fall season. Your San Diego County Ford dealers are having a remarkable summer, too, with no sign of slowing down. They continue to hook people up with a great selection of models that offer outstanding MPG and advanced technology, like the fun-to-drive Focus and the popular Fusion, available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Ford also has an impressive list of SUVs, like Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Well, no matter what you need, Ford has an SUV for you. And for serious fishermen that have boats to haul and gear to move, you can't beat the Ford F-150. It's not only stronger than ever, it's 700 pounds lighter, so it's faster and more efficient. Bottom line, Ford cars and trucks and SUVs are built for San Diego. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Okay. 
up? Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Hey, uh, welcome to our good friend, Mr. Ron Lane. Uh, the man. Yes, the, the number one guy in Fast Lane, Kobe Kayaks. <laughs> good morning, Ron. Hey, good up, morning, Ron? guys. How hey, you doing? Hey, great I'm to have you. Super excited to be here because of all the new things going on in Hobie World. What's new? Well, one of the new things is just about to come out next week. It's an 11 foot inflatable Mirage Drive kayak. Come on. And a combo. It combos as a stand up paddleboard. What? It's, yeah, it's an awesome boat. Wow. Yeah, we'll, have, well, those inflatables are. Amazing. Well, particularly for the guy who wants to put one in his boat. Or put one in the back of his trunk of his car or motorhome. Yeah. Take it wherever you go. And so everybody wants this little stand-up paddleboard that they can inflate and paddle around. Well, heck, if you could stick a lawn chair on it and a Mirage Drive, all of a sudden you've got a rocket ship kayak. And we'll we'll have those in the store this week. We'll be demoing them at our big workshop next weekend. That Tell us rad. about the workshop. Well, the workshop's going to be fun, and we've been meaning to do this for a long time. We're going to be focusing, you know, we're going to start right at 9 o'clock, and we're going to be focusing on how do you move a fishing kayak to the water? How do you okay. get it on top of a car? Good idea. Almost like little workshops running all day long to teach people how to make this easy. Because if it's not easy, you're not going to do it. And that's the beauty of kayak fishing is Easy, simple, to get out in the water, spend a few hours. I mean, this week I, I had some memories that I'll never forget. Went fishing on the Hobie 17 Pro Angler with Margo and my wife Debbie. So here we have a two-year-old out fishing with us at a sunset in Mission Bay. Well, check out our Instagram right now. Just posted it this morning. Uh, Let's Talk Hookup Radio Show on Instagram or Hookup1090 on Instagram. And uh, we posted one of those photos where you guys were out at sunset, beautiful sunset. Well, that was epic. I see all the guys. On the Pro Angler uh, 17, the new Pro Angler 17, which is three guys on a Pro Angler 17. Yeah, so so right at about the time we're getting ready to close, I'm sitting there going, what are you guys doing? And they're, like, getting gear all piled into the boat and stuff. And I'm like, well, we're going fishing after work. And I go, oh, great idea. You know, it's still 100 degrees out. We might as well go watch the sunset. Unbelievable sunset. And then right after there was that super moon. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Fishing wasn't all that good because the tide was just ripping, but... I gotta tell you that photo was awesome. Photo's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's on guys. our Instagram. You want to be on our Instagram because that that is an amazing. That's like a a piece of art. That photo. Well, you know that boat is a piece of art. I mean, yeah. you can just take one guy in it. You can put two people in. It. You can face each other with the yeah. seats. You know they move around and the Mirage drives move around, so you don't have to. You know you don't have locked to, in. Yeah, and and I was amazed at how fast it is when we use it for fishing mission, and I'll be in a pro angler. You know, 14, going side by side. That thing is faster. Amazing. Yeah, two two Mars drives. You can move some water. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about the, the uh, open house kind of demo. Well, we, we get asked a lot about rack systems. How do I put this big old long boat in my truck? Or how do I put it in my van? Or how do I put it on top of my car? So what we're planning on doing is having little workshops where – we have cars and trucks set up with boats in them, and we'll t- have people, you know, sometimes when you just see it, you go, oh, I get it. That's easy. Sure. How do you strap a kayak on top of a car? It's amazing how many clients go, uh, <laughs> and they go and buy those ratchet straps, you know, that you can crush a, <laughs> yeah. you can crush most boats with. Yeah. Anyway, so we don't use those. You have, you have the right stuff. Yeah. So w- what if somebody wants to test out a, Pro Angler 17, or they want to test out a stand-up paddleboard, or they want to test out a, a, a Mirage Drive Hobie kayak. Well, that's the thing, is we'll be doing these clinics with the boats. We'll, we'll have the boats right there on the beach wheels, coming off of cars. Then we're going to launch them right there, and we'll have them in the water right at the dock. And you can demo them all day long. Go out and try them. I mean, to me, if you buy a kayak and you haven't tried the Mirage Drive, you're making a huge mistake, or maybe I just didn't do my job right. I'm here. I'm here yeah, yeah. to say, don't buy anything until you try the new Hobie Absolutely. product. That, I mean, they're amazing. And now the new boats have bearings in the Mirage Drive, so they're even easier. Really, the glide technology is in. 
There's yeah. no question when you're out there, especially in the fishing grounds, you get out to La Jolla and you look around and first off, you are doing your job because at least 75 to 80 percent of the kayaks are all Mirage driven pedal kayaks. And then when you watch the difference between somebody who's still living in the Stone Age with a paddle and you watch around and it's just like, you know, it can be so much easier than that. Like, you know, I, I, I really I, to me, it makes so much sense. It, it does. And, and I do have a lot of respect for those guys who paddle. Because, you know, sometimes less is more. They've got a, you know, they've got a kayak and they're still fishing it. But I've got to tell you, most of those guys, if they just take a little time and jump in one, they go, oh, is this about kayaking or is this about fishing? To me, it's about fishing. It's about fun, too. Well. Don't you just sell fun over there? That's right. And, and And one of my favorite sayings is, is you have to disguise your exercise with fun. That's right. Otherwise, you're probably not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a smart plan. That's the truth, too. And that's what stand-up paddle boards, we call them Fountain, Fountain of Youth. Oh, man. Uh, the Hobie Mirage Drive kayak, same kind of thing. You're you're having fun, and you're getting pretty darn good exercise. You look at the guys that spend a lot of time in the Mirage Drive. Check their legs, man. They're buffed. Well, and they're check their fish count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they spend a lot of time on the water. Hey, you know, uh, that was another thing that um, that's you know, kind of come up over all these fishing missions that we've done. I mean, when you put, you know, 15 new people in kayaks every week and take them out and teach them to fish, it's it's interesting to me the next step. And I've been, we had the greatest thing happen uh, two weeks ago. We had Kevin Nakata, the Sea Samurai, a fishing guide. And he also works for Hobie. But he came down and did a seminar at the shop, and we were trying to limit it to 40 people. We ended up with 60. And as he's doing the seminar, he's filleting the yellowtail that he caught that day. How cool is that? And, and he, and he's How cool t- is that? It was really cool. And, and I, you know, he, he forgot uh, to bring a plug to put in his point of purchase. I mean, his point of, uh, you know, his seminar. He had pictures and everything. But it was better that way because he's sitting there talking, showing exactly how to fillet a yellowtail the correct way. And then also we then cut it up and sashimi it awesome we tried to have 40 we had 60 people there and so we're going to duplicate that we're going to have more seminars at the shop that's cool and so this one coming up this saturday yep this the the demo uh workshops just kind of a whole it's free right no it's all free just walk in and 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 those of our listeners that may not know where fast lane is where are you we're right in dana landing marina across the street from sea world on ingram um we're giant place right in the middle, right next to Dana Land. You, you yep. cannot miss it. Yeah. Yeah, well, gosh, we're so lucky to be there. Awesome. We've been, in, I, you know, I, I had this horrible thought. I, I, I've been there longer than I haven't love been. That. I love that. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, 35. How long have you been there? 35, 36 years. 36 years. Selling fun and have, I have the Are greatest clients. No. No. <laughs> I have the greatest clients. <laughs> I mean, it's so much fun selling fun, you know. Yeah, it to, is. To me, to me, having the family down there, too. Now, you know, Jared started the Salty Company, and, but he worked there for years, and I see him all the time. And, and now he's booming with Salty Crew. It's everywhere. Well, I, and he finally came in, and we finally got a lot of gear. You know, we got the new trunks, the new fishing shorts with the plier the pockets. shorts are awesome. Yeah, they really are. Good. They're comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Great yeah. job. Well, it's fun to see him just flourishing in a, you know, surfing and fishing. What? It loves that. Oh, yeah. You see the Salty. Now, Hayden... Hayden's in the store all the time taking kind of, uh, you know, more manage, you know, management, you know, it's really fun to see Hayden and he'll sneak out and go fishing all the time on the kayaks and it, you can see him, it just gets him excited about selling, selling fish and kayaks. Yeah. yeah. And Callan is there helping people out. He's got a lot of experience in the, in, in the kayak. Okay. So Callan is not only a really great with all the boats and uses them all the time, but he's the fastest guy at at changing the new Mirage Drive. If you have an old Mirage Drive, you can change it and put in the bearings. And we've got him down to 45 minutes. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's good. a complete rebuild, you know. It's like so can you, if you have an old Mirage Drive, can you rebuild with the new bearings? Oh, absolutely. You can retrofit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. So bring it in to Fastlane and, and see how fast Callan can do it for you. If he's listening to this, yeah, I can hear him rolling his eyes. Sorry about that. So the, the old style is just not bearings. Yeah, they they put they put needle bearings in in five of the moving parts in the Mirage Drive, and so all of a sudden you're getting a ten percent advantage with 
you know, less drag. You're, you know, it's, it's actually, you feel the difference. And I've had tons of guys that have done this yeah. that come in and go, yeah, it did make a difference. I'm, you know, they're stoked. That's cool. But that's Hobie for you. They just always coming up with new stuff. New stuff. Now, fishing mission. When are we going to start fishing mission again? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh. We've got two things going on. Uh, Afrin from Warbaits is going to guide a few fall fishing missions. And we're taking sign-ups now. We would just want you to call the shop or just email us. You know, you can call the shop at 619-222-0766 and say, hey, I, I want to get in on the next fishing mission. We'll put your name down. Now, but but I had a meeting with Conway Bowman this week, mm-hmm. and we're going to be doing – this is kind of fun. We're going to be doing ki- – you know, it, it, Conway has – he's already coined a name. It's called Fly Fishing 101 on kayaks. Wow. Kayak Fly Fishing 101. He is the – the fly fishing superstar. Well, I think it's his wife, actually. You Michelle. Yeah, Michelle, yeah. <laughs> Michelle's out there on a stand-up paddleboard catching white sea bass. Yeah. You know, off of you know, off of swamis. I, I was pretty impressed. The yeah. bikini helped too. Yeah, that helps too. But Conway uh, will be doing fly fishing 101 on kayaks. Right. And, and here's the here's what here's what we're gonna do. November 5th, we're having a free workshop. It's been six to 8 in the evening. Okay. It's a Thursday night, and it's free. Great. We're going to have a boat set up, the Conway, you know, Pro Angler, Conway Bowman Pro Angler with the, you know, with, with all the gear on it, his fishing gear all set up, and he's going to yeah. be talking about how to do it. And you can sign up there. Now, we've only got 20 spots available. Ooh. So we'll have 10 spots for November 21st, and we'll have 10 spots for December 12th. Okay. But Conway's personally guiding these that things. That is cool. Yeah, and so the idea behind the November Thursday night meeting is just to see if you really want to try this and do this. Now, if you know you want to kayak fly fish with Conway, you can call the shop, put your name down on one of those dates. Because there's only 20 spots. There's 10, only 10 on be, one day, 10 on yeah, the other day. Yeah. But the clinic is free on November the 5th. Yeah. So if you want to come and check that out. Well, and probably be learning quite a bit of stuff for those guys that maybe don't maybe have their own kayak. Great idea. Just learn. Yeah. But Great but idea. I finally nailed, you know he was down at the marina taking a, a you know guiding on his power boat out out back, and I finally said Conway, when are you going to do it? And he goes, I'd love to do that. You know, so we've got it all set. It's now just fine tuning it. And uh, but that that November six to eight's free. And we'll have a boat set up. He'll be standing in the boat doing his seminar. That's so cool. That'll be fun. I think it's an awesome idea. Yeah. Great idea. Well, as you can hear, we have a lot of fun to talk about here today. Just good times and good fishing here in Southern California. And so much going on. Boy, what a great time to have Ron on here. In the fall, perfect time to be taking the kayak out. It's great, great times. And we're going to be having lots of fun. We want you to join us this morning. If you want to be a part of Let's Talk Hook Up, get in on the fun and have your questions answered. Give us a catch report. We'd love to hear from you this morning. Two ways you can reach us on Let's Talk Hook Up. And first is with our local line. That one's 858 area code 457-1090. Again, 858 858- Four five seven ten ninety, or you can reach us toll free. That toll free number is eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. One more time, eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. Not only will we be talking fishing today, talking about all this great stuff that's going on right now. We have also got an awesome prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show today, and that's a brand new pair of Maui Jim sunglasses. It's the Waterman, which is built for kayak fishermen. This thing is amazing, right? Yeah, it's built a, for the kayak fisherman, built for the surfer, for the kayak fisherman, paddleboard that wants to wear a pair of sunglasses on the water. Yeah, and not have any issues with uh, with glass. I mean, they're they're not going to you know stick to your head. Right. Very very nice good pair of glasses. Them. It's a uh, it, it's literally built for that. A guy that's going to be active, not wanting glasses to shake off while you're working in the water and doing your thing. Sheds the water right out of the glass. It's the titanium lens color. It's a or it's a Maui HT lens. Um, it's just a really it's cool just a pair of glasses. Here for Southern California, yep. that titanium frame, courtesy of Maui Gem, and it's perfect. It was built for kayak and kayakers and surfers and paddle boarders and all that. So Very fitting one lucky pair of glasses is for going to win a pair of those Maui Jim sunglasses. You got it. Well, as you can hear, we got a great show coming your way today. And when we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls. Tons of information coming up. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. 
Get it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the Impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Mapleview in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. You can catch more lobster and pull deeper with the Ace Line Hauler. It's faster so you can get those bugs in the boat. Now the Ace Line Hauler is better than ever with the Bulldog Hands-Free Accessory. It pulls your hoops hands-free and even coils your line. If you're not yet on the Ace Line Hauler team, you must like sore arms. Get the Ace Line Hauler and make lobster and crab hooping more fun and productive at selected dealers or check acelinehauler.com. Have you ever imagined casting a fly or a lure on one of the most beautiful and productive rivers in Alaska? At Katmai Lodge, you can catch up to all five species of Pacific salmon. The king, sockeye, chum, pink, and silver salmon, along with rainbow trout, arctic grayling, dolly varden, and other native stream fish. When anglers dream of trophy salmon and trout, the Alagnac River is their destination, and Katmai Lodge is the premier base camp. Being the original river-based lodge on the Alagnac gives the facility a leg up on the competition. Both experienced and novice anglers have rated Katmai Lodge and its knowledgeable guides as the best of the best. Katmai Lodge is remote, yet offers all the amenities of a first-class lodge. During your Alaska visit, you'll see amazing wildlife, brown bears, caribou, eagles, moose, otters, and much more. Schedule a day trip on their private de Havilland Otter Float Plane and visit the world-famous Brooks Falls. Book online at Katmai.com or call 1-800-330- 0326. That's catmy.com or call 1 800 330 0326 for the fishing adventure of a lifetime. Cast Tours is a family owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right, here we go. Hey, let's go ahead and jump to the phones. Look who's on the line. Uh, Captain Chuck Taft is here. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing very today? Very good, very good. Hey, I thought that I'd like to share a little information that might help out some of your guys on this wahoo fishing. Yeah. It was absolutely the most spectacular day we've ever seen in the ocean. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anything like it. It was we started off, and I went to try to catch my son a fish because uh, he'd never caught a wahoo, and we just grabbed some of our friends, Rick Scott and guys from the boats, and took off. Guys, it was we caught troll fish, and we had nine stops. And out of the nine stops, Pete, we hung bait fish or iron fish on every stop. Fishing. And you're talking local wahoo fishing, leaving in the morning from San Diego and having legitimate stops on wahoo. Yes, it was legitimate stops on Wahoo, and you know we had we had caught three fish before this, just you know like all the other sport boats have done, but we never really worked at it or anything else. We we chummed them up just like it was a tuna stop or an albacore stop, and the fish responded and came right to the boat, 
and flash through the corner and everything else. I think that a lot of us, me included, have all missed a bet when we're out trolling and we get that jig strike. Everybody, you know, you're trolling a cowbell or you're trolling a big bomb, and you know that you you got a wahoo on. Everybody's so excited to catch that one fish. Right. That nobody realizes that they travel but one and three to ten fish up to a hundred fish in a school. And if you tell them and you guys throw a bomb out and throw the iron out and stuff when you're bit, that you have a very good chance. There was three times we had seven to nine fish hung. Oh, wow, man, no that's kidding. unbelievable. And so give us uh, the idea of what would be the proper setups. Of course, everybody knows, you know, you're trolling marauders or cowbells or whatever. But what about the bait and the bomb setup? What were the hot deals? The, well, what we did is we took just regular beach and wire, the 40 in the 50-pound test beach and wire that you had to fish uh, your irons with and wired up our jigs. And then we actually took two O hooks and wired them up and put a swivel on them just like we would have, um, you know, to fish a jig. It's no different than we did years ago when you, everybody wired up to fish barracuda and stuff. And it worked phenomenal. I mean, we get bit. Uh, one one guy jumped in the tank, and we started chumming sardines and, that we had. And the fish just came up. You'd see the fish flash through the corner. And, I mean, this worked on uh, stops near the islands, away from the islands where we got bit. Um, it was amazing to see that the response to the fish this way. How, really amazing. how exciting that that's just an opportunity for a lot of people. To, I mean, that's a that's a really cool fish that's on so many people's bucket list. And, I mean, let's face it, the opportunity to be gone from work for, you know, 10 to 15 days for a lot of people doesn't exist for a while, you know, wait till retire. And so what a cool opportunity we're having right now. I mean, absolutely anybody that's listening to the show right now has a legitimate chance to jump on a boat on a one-day trip, on a three-quarter-day trip, and, and have a shot at catching a wahoo. So you guys caught 29, and I understood you hooked close to 70. Is that true? Yes. We caught 29 fish, and we probably lost as many as we caught. Um, there was 10 of us on the boat. It was the first wahoo I ever caught. Mm -hmm. I've never made a long-range trip. You know, I mean, I fished three to five days stuff here locally. And gone to Guadalupe quite a few times with my father and my brother, but I have never personally caught a wahoo myself, and neither had my son. And that's what it started out to be. And they they meet her on the sonar unbelievably well. Every single stop we got was a sonar school. Really, that's really cool. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So, so what it, were the if you were going to give advice to our listeners on how to not lose the wahoo? What were the casualties? Tell us about that. Uh, the biggest casualty is pumping the fish when people let the line go slack before they can, you know, start winding on the fish. It's it's no different than fishing a tuna or anything else. It's very, very important not to let any slack whatsoever. They pull so hard. We fished them all with 30 and 40 pound tests. We didn't use anything heavier than that to fish the fish with. So it's not like you have to have a giant reel. I mean, the rods we trolled with were our regular 6 O's with just 80 pound on them. That's so. Cool. You know, and part of it is just wahoo fishing. Wahoo, wahoo is just a, it's a, it's not an easy fish to put. Yeah, it's just a high casualty fish. I and mean, we always say in long range fishing, if you're one for three to one for five, you're doing, you're doing right in there. They're just, they're a, you know, fish's got a really hard bony mouth and they, they, they get away. They're escape artists. So what was the hot jig, Chuck? Chrome. It did, we used just chrome. Uh huh. They Sing, like the single chrome. hook, treble hook. Single hooks. Okay. The single hook jig was by far the best jig. We tried. And like I said, I've had no experience doing this. So if I can go out and do it, you know, <laughs> anybody can go That's out and do cool. it. That's pretty cool. And, it, you know, like I said, eight of the ten people have never caught a fish. And everybody had between one to three fish. Uh, Rick Scott caught his limit. My son caught his limit. Who could ever imagine? <laughs> Five, going, you got to be kidding Five me. Five wahoo. That's so rad. <laughs> Who could ever imagine going out and catching your limit? And we left, you know, in the morning to go fishing. It was a three-quarter day trip with ten guys. Uh huh. Wow, wow. That's, that's cool. That's pretty amazing. So, uh, so you think this stuff's going to stick around, or is, you know, is I, it still I here? Think there's, I think there's going to be fish around. Um, you know, I think from what I've talked to since this, I've talked to Mike Keating and I've talked to a couple of the long range guys. I guess that down at the bank and stuff, they have times where if it gets crowded, the fish don't bite. And it seems like when one boat gets in on them and stuff at a time on a spot of fish, it seems to bite pretty good for one boat. 
and I think if the guy finds a little spot of fish off by himself, I think you have a very good chance of catching bait fish and stuff from what I've seen now. I mean, but I had no idea that they, you know, because this year we'd be fishing kelp patties and stuff, and guys would be chumming. You'd see one go through the corner, and everybody hook one once in a while, you know, and we didn't land hardly any of them because nobody was geared up. But have being geared up to fish them on the bait and on the jigs, we landed over 50% of what we hooked. Wow, that's wow. awesome. Wow. That's that's, absolutely and how awesome. big were the fish, Chuck? The smallest one weighed 36 pounds, and the biggest one weighed 76. Oh, oh that's yeah. so cool. Well, and, there's another thing is that you're fishing 30, you're fishing 70 pound fish on 30 pound, 40 pound test, man. There's got to be some casual. That's a big fish. Yeah, it was amazing that how fast they are. People have never caught one that, it, like you said, it's a bucket list thing to do because. You guys have all caught them on long range trips and stuff, and a person that's never seen this happen can't realize how fast you can get bit in the stern and one can be up off the bow of the boat. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like it. Second fastest fish in the ocean. But anyway, yeah. just a couple of those things I thought, you know, guys might, you know, if they're going fishing for them to know that just a regular bait hook and wire it up, and they have the wire. You guys have the wires over there, Rick, at the store, because that's where one of my kids went and got the beach and wire <laughs> and, and wired up the hooks and stuff so you know the casualties weren't that bad That's but awesome. i do know one thing the one kid put a chrome swivel on and it low and lasted one fish <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you like want to make sure you use a dark colored yeah, swivel good. that don't shine Chuck, all right that's well, great Chuck info Tech, man yeah, it's good info uh really great score probably one that may never be equaled ever again in southern california fishing but we hope it does 29 wahoo well i think this will help level. some people i think there will be more caught that from people knowing now that they do come to the corner that you can chum them and they do stick around All you know right. well we sure appreciate the info captain chuck taft appreciate that very much thanks for joining us on well, thank you guys good point. luck and good fishing all right chuck. thanks a lot let's go to captain drew card you catching the wahoo this morning drew <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to come after that report. <laughs> we definitely don't have 29, but you know we're having a pretty pretty spectacular morning here this morning. We we pulled up on a kelp patty and we were thinking tuna, tuna, tuna. We got uh, we got our first bite. It was a heavy fish. We we were you know pretty much sure it was a wahoo. It came off. Guy started throwing the raider jigs and the bombs and stuff. We hooked. I think we hooked 10 on our first stop. Oh, and we me. got, yeah, offshore on a kelp pad. We caught, we caught the first two. We caught two out of the, you know, 10 hookups. We went back up, tried it again. We hooked another four. We got another two. So we got four on the boat. You Definitely not 49, but pretty spectacular nonetheless. Within, you know, 40 miles of San Diego offshore is pretty rad. And it's 7.30 in the morning. Let, let's not forget that. It's 7.30 in the morning. You guys already hooked, what, 15 Wahoo? Yeah, yeah, we're we're uh, we're pretty stoked. You know, we were looking at this kelp. And we we thought we had seen this kelp before, and it was you know big kelp had had a big school of tuna on. It. We rolled up to it, and I didn't see, you know, I didn't see the tuna on it. I just saw a couple, you know, a couple, you know, scattered marks. I'm like, oh, well, you know, whatever. We're going to stop anyway, obviously. And <laughs> it was it's been straight wahoo. We haven't caught anything else. Straight wahoo. It's pretty, oh, darn. pretty spectacular. This is so <laughs> rad. What's going on right now, Drew? It's just crazy that. I mean, it, you can absolutely go out and target a lot. You can go out and expect to have a shot. You know, whether they, whether you connect and everything is another story. And just like we said, you know, the casualty with Wahoo is probably the highest of any game fish that we catch. They're they're just hard to put on the boat. But the fact that they're around and this close is just it's Pretty phenomenal. Nice. And now this is this an overnight? Yeah, you trip know, we, the... we we sorry we, we hooked those fish and sorry about that. We hooked those fish and. Uh, you know, and, and we've hooked a, you know, we've had three Wahoo this year fishing offshore, and we've only had one a trip, you know, uh, you know, it was three, I think it was three consecutive trips. And most of them, and all three of those have been trolling. And we've seen some Wahoo on kelp patties, you know, last year and this year, we've thrown the Raider jigs and the bombs and stuff, and, and just haven't got any bites. Well, this one, you know, we got, we were getting bit, you know, we had, like I said, we had like eight, ten bites. I, I walked down, I, I tied up my Raider jig, I threw it out. And I got bit twice. Oh. <laughs> this is so oh. cool. After, after we're drifting along for like 10, you know, 10, 12, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it wasn't like, you know, I just ran down there freaking out. I, I just kind of leisurely walked out, tied on a Raider jig, threw it out, and got bit twice. I didn't land mine, obviously, but <laughs> we got a couple of bites. But it's just, it's just really cool. I mean, 
you know, just think of what what is going on right now. Southern California is crazy. It's this pretty spectacular. All it time. Is. This yeah. is all time. Well, one of the things, like Chuck was saying, Drew, and, and I'm sure you're going to attest to this, is key with wildlife fishing is keeping that big bend in the rod, keeping the line tight because their wilds are so hard, hard. And oftentimes they don't even have the hook in right. the mouth. And as soon as you let up pressure, they drop it or it falls out and you're done. Right? Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a little embarrassed to say it. I don't know if I should admit this, but the the reason I, I I didn't get mine hooked very well is my drag was a little I, light. I, I knew oh. I, I knew I, I knew before you even said it when you said you leisurely walked down and made your first cast because that it happened to all of us, you know. But yeah, super tight drag with those things. And Oahu's so known to you know we'll say like dog bone the jig where they eat the because that's how they eat a bait. You know, they cut them they cut them in half. They come right from the center and they. They come back around and eat the other half, and so many times those things will grab right in the center of the jig, and, you know, when everybody's screaming at you to whine, you're trying a lot of times to pull that thing through them, and you hook a lot of wahoo on the lure from the outside going in, and uh, and they're just, they're tough. They're just yeah, tough they're, to get hooks tough. into. Yeah. So was this an overnight yeah, yeah, trip, Drew? No, this is the second day of a two-day. We You know, we had a decent day yesterday. We didn't light the world on fire. We had... You know, some decent Dorado fish in. We caught some tuna as well. We didn't catch any wahoo yesterday. We're we're on day two of a two-day trip. So we woke up out here. Uh, you know, we're fishing close to home. And, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, this is, you know, three-quarter day range. Extended half-day range, really. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, That's close, awesome. Close to home. You don't have to be far away. You know, we, we stayed close to home on this trip because there's, uh, you know, going to be a little weather here the uh, – today and a little bit yesterday afternoon so we didn't go out to the banks which is where we've been kind of going on our day and a half trips and longer going out you know we've been fishing osborne and cortez and tanner and stuff like that but we stayed close just to you know kind of stay out of the the worst of the weather and we've had nice weather in here we've had you know good fishing we're putting together nice trips well what are we, what, are we, what about the pacific queen what's the schedule this week aboard the pacific queen well, uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> we have a couple one-day trips scheduled this week, and we we're going to target Wahoo uh, coastally, you know, uh, you know Mexican coastline, Coronado Islands, uh, maybe even out front, you know, Nine Mile Bank stuff like that. So we we have a couple of those scheduled. I think we have one tonight, the next night, and then Thursday night, and then we have a day and a half in the middle of the week, and we have another day and a half next weekend. So, you know, our trips have been real light. We've we've sat at the dock a few days during the week just because there's, you know. Uh, interest is dying off a little bit just because you know guys are going back to school, ho- holidays are coming up and stuff. So, but uh, we got lots of room and we got trips scheduled all the way through uh, the middle of November. And then at that point we're going to start our maintenance. But we got some long trips in November scheduled. It's super affordable, you know, price. It's a lot less than what we normally charge during the summer. And we'll be doing Outer Bank stuff. And and I'm sure we're going to have you know a chance of even walking then. You know, even in November with the way the water looks. It's, mm-hmm. It's no, incredibly warm no out there. No doubt about it. How does somebody book it if they want to go aboard the Pacific Queen? Well, if they want to come fish on the Pacific Queen, they got to call Fisherman's Landing at 619-221-8500, or they can sign up directly on our website at pacific-queen.com. All right. Drew Card, Pacific Queen, way to get them. Go get a few more Wahoo. And keep one. I think that's. Keep whining. Right. Turn the handle. <laughs> turn, the handle. On, turn the handle. Turn the handle. So rad. From there, how, how about that? Let's head down south to Rancho Leonero, where we were a week ago today, believe it or not. It seems like a decade ago. But uh, back in paradise with Mr. John Ireland from Rancho Leonero. Buenos dias, John. Hi, John. Hi, Pete. Hi, Rick. Hi, Ron. Hey. I'm ready to well, go. Well, now back. I know where uh, my Wahoo went. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> <Guys>. <laughs> Crazy, you huh, all my fish up there, aren't you? Yeah, it happens, but there's a few fish down there. We found no. a lot of marlin. A lot of marlin. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm not, I don't have the results from the Lynn Rose, but I'm sure they did awesome because uh, really, really, really strong uh, marlin bite. We had uh, a couple guys out day before yesterday, and then an hour and a half, they caught a sail, a striper, and a blue. All wow. of them. No and then in the course of one and a half hour time, and I don't know whether we ever had all three in one day. You know, over the course of a week, we've had it happen, of course, but I'm not sure that we've ever had, you know, the hat trick, all three species in the, in the one day, and certainly in an hour and a half. <clears throat> it kind of gives you an idea how good the bill fishing is, so it's really, really wide open. It's interesting, you know, because a lot of our anglers, you know, they'll go out and they'll, and they'll uh, take advantage of it for the first day, and then everybody's more interested in the tuna and, and loading up the ice chests. And, and that's been good, too. You know, it's been... Uh, uh, 
a lot of lot of tuna, a lot a lot of footballs, but now the the bite has gotten much better. Uh, there's a bigger uh, tuna mixed in with them. Of course, a lot of skipjacks still as well. Uh, pretty close, you know, between off of uh, outside of Pomo and then up. It's been uh, uh, pretty close inshore and, uh, and not under not under porpoise or anything, just fairly spread. And and uh, but but the guys have been picking up. We've been been getting good bait, a lot of live sardine, and they're mixing it with dead sardine and been extremely effective. So tuna's been good. Inside's been a lot of small rooster fish. Um, not as many wahoo as, as uh, the last couple weeks. And after listening to your reports, I know why there. Um, but it's been it's been real, real, real good fishing. For, like you say, for the billfish in particular, and a real consistent bite for the yellowfin as well. So uh, we're pleased about that. It's and uh, I th- actually I think the fishing's been as good in the last couple weeks as it has this season. So we're pleased. We're ending with a bang, you guys. Yes, indeed. And so ending, I don't know about ending, though, because the season certainly goes through November, right? Yeah, yeah, through November. But for us, we're winding down, you know, another couple, another six weeks, and, and that's winding down. And I us. imagine the weather is about perfect at Rancho Lanero right now. You know, it's funny. As you know, when, when you were down, it was raining and about 10, 15 degrees cooler than in San Diego. Um, yeah. uh, it changed. It's, it's, it's heated. It's gotten much hotter hot. again. Back it's, to, it's, to, like, it's summer the, hot, huh? Yeah, it's like summer hot in the mid nineties last couple of days. Clear, flat water, you know. And uh, but this, you know, we're getting to the end of that too. It's starting to really cool down. October is a real nice month, as you know. Yeah, you know, it cools time. down, and the water's still real warm, and the fishing's good, but the air's cooled down some. So. Yeah. But it's pleasant. It's a yeah. good time of the year to be down here. Right it now. is. You can jump on a flight. There's lots of great deals on flights. I know Alaska was having some specials on flights to Cabo. So you want to jump down there for a quick one down to Rancho Leonera? How do we do that? Thanks, Pete. It's 800-646-2252 or RanchoLandero.com. I might mention that uh, they added Alaska added a flight out of John Wayne now too. They're running yes. out of John Wayne, competing with Southwest. Uh, so it just seems like almost you know every month one or two more flights is being added. So there's lots of ways to get down to Cabo San Lucas. When that's we for sure. when we flew out on Tuesday, I've never seen that Cabo Airport with more people in it. It's amazing. It's become quite the destination. Second, second busiest airport in Mexico, in Mexico behind right. behind Mexico City. And and it, when I first came down there, it wasn't there. There was nobody that. there. There was no airport there. Yeah. No. <laughs> All so right, cool. John. Well, thanks for the report, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. You sure, we'll look forward to it, guys. All right, Thank you. That. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump in the phone. You right? got it, man. Well, they are packed up. Everybody wants to talk to Ron. How about we start it off in La Jolla and talk to our buddy Harry? Harry's up this morning from La Jolla. Good morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up, Harry. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Harry. Ron. Uh, your uh, your seminar on the the lifts to get the kayaks on top of the uh, cars is incredibly good timing. Uh, as you know, I've been in your shop numerous occasions uh, looking uh, to figure out what I could use to uh, get my Outback up on top of my little SUV. I've got a makeshift uh, arrangement right now that doesn't work, and I finally uh, finally reached the point where I've got the finances. So. Uh, next weekend, what I'd like to do uh, is put my kayak on, uh, bring it down, and you sell me uh, the right rack for it, and I'll have you install it the same day. Ah, we'll be gearing you up. I like it. One of the uh, one of the key things on um, putting you know heavy fishing kayaks on top of your car is the right equipment. One of the we we cheat a lot. You know, we use these little side arms that help you lift up one side of the kayak at a time. We also have one called the Rhino T-Loader. I love it because it's lever arms back, and you can put the bow of the boat on it and slide it right that up. That thing is amazing. Oh, yeah. I used one of those one time. It's pretty you have cool. a receiver hitch in your on your car or your truck. It makes, I do, yes. It makes it effortless. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I, probably, I think one of those is in your future. Yeah. <laughs> Rhino T-Loader. That's right. Cool. Ron, are there any ways to make sure that they're they're not taken off by somebody other than the owner? I've lost the kayak already off the top of my car. Yeah, get one of those stickers that says, this car is protected by Smith & Wesson. <laughs> <laughs> then a big lock. <laughs> so there are locks, especially on that T-loader. You can lock it on. on yeah. Oh, right? good. Yeah. yeah. And you can lock it through. The, the advantage of the Mirage Drive is there's a hole in the bottom, and you can lock it right through that hole, right? I highly suggest it. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a gentleman that came to the store. He had his car. I mean, ha, you know, he came to the store. He had his van out in front of his house. He'd gotten home late from fishing. 
went in to eat dinner naturally, went back out and his no wasn't there. And I know the guy who stole it did not see this man. He was huge. <laughs> Bodybuilder or something. I'm going, yeah. man, the guy who stole his kayak was very gutsy. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Harry, we'll see you down at Fast Lane Kayaks next Saturday morning. Sure will. All right. Thanks, thanks, Harry. thanks a lot for getting us started. Appreciate the call. And when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls. We've got catch reports coming up and all kinds of great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. <laughs> For over five decades, Lee Palm Sport Fishing has set the standard in long-range fishing that they pioneered long ago. The Red Rooster 3 sets a new standard of excellence. The Red Rooster 3 is one of the most modern, quiet, and fastest long-range vessels in the fleet. They have handpicked the finest crew to make your trip a memorable one. The Red Rooster 3 offers trips from 3 to 18 days and runs year-round to the best fishing spots on the planet. Ride the Red Rooster 3 once and you'll be back again. Call the Red Rooster 3 at 619 224 38 57 or see them on the web at redrooster3.com. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three quarter, and full day trips available. Check out the full service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing, and it's all run by fishermen for fishermen 1717 Quivera Road just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay book online at seaforthlanding.com okay so it's time to talk about Shimano and when you're talking Wahoo one reel is the total standout when you're throwing bait or bomb on a Wahoo. What is it? Trinidad. Trinidad A. I mean, it's all about torque. You know, we talked about how it's tough to get a hook into a Wahoo, and you really got to grind them on. It's it's not an easy fish to put a hook into with that hard mouth, and that's what you get out of Trinidad. H-E-G gearing. That's a big thing from Shimano from forever. High efficiency gearing, and it means you have a ton of power in the handle. When you're turning the handle and your bit, it's going to be physically easier for you to grind that fish on with Trinidad than it is with any other reel on the market, period. Yeah, and there's no question. And you have enough drag. You heard Drew, drag's not tight enough. That's not going to happen with Trinidad A. Right. It's got way more than you need right there. So you want to catch a Wahoo? Trinidad A from Shimano. I'd say the 20 would be a good size. Same with me, man. Or the 30. <laughs> Either one. Trinidad A at Shimano at your local Shimano dealer. Saturday, November 7th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. It's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts, incredible deals on tackle, closeouts we've never offered before, plus over 20 tackle manufacturers' representatives like Daiwa, and the Saltiga and Saltus Lever Drag 2-speed reels, the Saltiga and Saltus Star Drag reels, and much more from Daiwa. Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing will have unbelievable pricing on tackle, clothing, and accessories. There is also a huge raffle. Best ever tackle bargains at Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 7th. Check saltwatertackle.com. If you've heard the advice Scott Sherman from Fifth Avenue Insurance has given anglers over the past couple of years, you know there is much more to your boat insurance than just a low rate. Well, Fifth Avenue Insurance can not only find you the lowest rates on your boat insurance, they also make sure the coverage you get meets all your needs. What if you had an accident with the boat and found out you didn't have proper coverage? Well, that just won't happen when you insure with Fifth Avenue Insurance. Call them for advice on your current boat policy or any of your insurance. Insurance needs. Fifth Avenue Insurance, 619 640 3130, or check the number 5 T H A V E I N S dot com. Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter captains in all of Sitka, and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut like the ones we do almost every 
every year. And salmon? Well, Sitka is famous for some of the best runs in Alaska. We also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. And listen to this. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except the tips. It's truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Come and join me on the Let's Talk hookup trip in June, or just go when you can. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136, or check kingfishercharters.com. XSRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You are listening to the home of the Aztecs. He's gone. Touchdown. Aztec San Diego Sports Leader. The Mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Hey, it's time to find out what's biting out there. It is time for the Catchport, which is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Hey, it's long range season, and it's time to pre book your processing order with Fisherman's Processing before your trip. That way, you're the first in line when your trip returns. You can friend them on Facebook at Fisherman's Processing, or for more details, check Fisherman'sProcessing.com. And Pete, I know I, just like you, had a piece of little chunk of Your wahoo, local wahoo that, you caught. That, that was done up by a fisherman's processing yesterday and we, we talk about it all the time but you know their their line is that their their product is always table ready and that's exactly what it is. Get it, it you, out of the package you, and put it on the Yeah, cup. that's it. <laughs> and yeah. like you do nothing. There's no trimming, there's no anything. You you open it and and you enjoy it. It's it's yeah. that good. Pretty and and cool. the thing is if you catch a, something that's as valuable as a wahoo or a local tuna you owe it to yourself to take it to fish. How true is that? Yeah. yeah. It's it's amazing the product that those guys put out. Pretty darn cool. Well, hey, with that, it's time to find out what's biting out there. We got the man, Captain Brian Woolley, is standing by this morning. What's up, Woolley? Hey, guys. What's happening this morning? How are you? We're doing great. Just want to know what's going on up at Dana War Sport Fishing. Well, that's hard to tell this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't know what the situation is out there this week. You know, things kept changing from... You know, brutal, the full speed good, and then back to tough again. You know, there really hasn't been any middle ground in it this last week. You know, I don't know if we chalk it up to weather or just, you know, no fish in our, you know, little area between the 209, the, you know, the east end of the island or the 267. Hard, hard to tell, you know. A couple days ago, like I said, this past week, we did have some really good fishing. You know, Wednesday, the fleet got on a good kelp and a catch was made. You know, straight yellowfin. Not the biggest stuff, five to ten pound fish, you know, at best. Then again, on Thursday, another kelp in a completely different area did full speed for multiple boats. You know, Tommy on a day in a private end of his day was close to 230 fish off that kelp and, you know, a handful of Dorado. And then the next day, you know, we got on that exact same kelp on the thumb fun and there was nothing on it. So it's, you know, it's just really not sure what the situation will be this next week. You know, it's no different than, you know, the stuff that's happening down the beach for sure. It's all keyed in on one kelp and you got to be able to get on that one magic kelp and, you know, hopefully make your day out of it. A few more Wahoo in the counts this week for us, too. Which, you know, try to keep that ball rolling this last week. Unfortunately, we were able to do that. And then along the beach here, you know, just this uh, calico bass fishing is still phenomenal. There's plenty of bonito as well for, you know, the more novice angler to get their teeth cut on. And, uh, you know, it's a great time to, you know, get a, a first-timer or a kid out there on those half-day trips because it's exciting. It's been really fun fishing. So, We'll see what happens this next week. Certainly, we'll uh, you know probably invest a day out there. I know I have some charters on on the boats here on my boat, so we'll be out there uh, looking around a day or two this week. But you know, I don't know. Maybe time for us to start switching gears and spend part of our days looking for some yellow tail and some of those zones where we caught some fish earlier this year and you know the same time last year. So we're gonna kind of play it by year this week uh, and, and call it like that. So if you guys want to hop on a trip with us at the landing? The phone number there is area code nine four nine. Four nine six five seven nine four, or you can check us out on the web at gainawards.com. And then, uh, guys, uh, listeners want to save a few bucks on a local trip, and then you can link us right there on our banner ad on the Let's Talk Cook Up webpage, and that'll take you over, and you can save a few bucks on one of those trips. Right, big bucks on one of those trips on the front page of our website. Just click on that Dana Wharf Sport Fishing banner, you got it. You know, the one thing I'd want to comment on that is when when that really good Wahoo fishing happened the week previous. Up at Dana Wharf, like you saw it several days previous down in San Diego. You saw the obvious flash of fish come through, and it seemed like it just slid on up the beach, and then it was caught up there. And it it sure kind of seems like that's exactly what's happening again right now. There was a an obvious noticeable you know flash of fish, you know another wave that we had down here. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised for you know with all that good fishing that was had in San Diego you know a few days ago, and now it seems to have tapered a teeny bit. I mean, I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see all that good fishing just slide its way right up the beach and, you know, watch the Dana Wharf guys get the second wave of Wahoo coming. 
Well, you know, we're hoping. We we saw, you know, plenty of long, long belts this week, you know, just stuff that we couldn't get tight, you know, be it for whatever reason. So I think it's a good call. You know, we'll, we'll you know, certainly keep our eyes open and jigs out and all that good stuff in hopes of, uh, you know, some of that coming to fruition. So we'll just kind of, like I said, play by ear and see how it plays out. Keep on them, Willie. Great report, as always. Glad to hear things are going good at Dana Wharf. And not too bad when we can fall back to catching a bunch of great yellowtail. Indeed. There you go. <laughs> Appreciate go. it, Willie. Right, we look forward Thanks. to talking to you next week. All right. Have a good one, guys. All Later. right. With that, let's hit the surf, our surf zone. The surf guru, Gundy Gunderson's on the line. What's up, Gundy? Hey, what's going on, guys? We are doing awesome, man. Just anxious to hear how the surf fishing's going. A fall time, great time of year to go do a little surf fishing. Totally. I got uh, I got two species in this report I've never had in this report before, so that tells you where we're at. We got some really warm water. Uh, the better bite outside the surf line, but still lots to do. It seems like those northern beaches, uh, a little bit cooler water, the surf line a little bit better, but let me get to it here. Nice bounce back from last week. Swell came down. Beaches cleaned up nicely. Once again, bite, like I said, was better outside the surf line than the inside. Hook line sinker reported excellent calico bass fishing up in the rocky Kelpie areas there. Four to five inch big hammers. Smelt grunion pattern, uh, cast along the reefs. Those guys up there told me the reef fish in the kelp, all that's really good. Lots of white sea bass, too, in the mix there. One of the kayakers came in with a 60-pound fish yesterday, caught off the, the reef right outside there. Lots of bonita and firecracker yellowtail off the Lita Pier, harbor jetties, even off the beach they're getting some bonita this week. Wiley's reported good calico bass action off the rocky spots like Pescador, Matador, Big Rock. Fish to four pounds, taking so cut squid, swim bait, lots of bonita off the pier there, also lots of bonita and a few yelltail in the King Harbor, Redondo area. Big fish uh, to the south reported striped bass were inside L.A. Harbor and along Bolsa Chica during the week. Two fish to, uh, in the 8 to 10 pound class checked in yesterday. The same angler has 12 striped bass from 8 to 12 pounds in the last six weeks of fishing, throwing a sexy smelt-colored flash minnow and just working the birds all along that uh, Bolsa Chica, Surfside, Sunset, all that, that area there. No stripers are in there. Bonita been popping up all along the stretch, too. The pier guys are throwing splashers, green and yellow bonita feathers, yellowfin croaker bite, real good. One of the guys fishing croaker had an 8-pound Jack Crevel caught, uh, the guys in the shop saw the fish and said it was definitely a Jack Cravel. Hogan's reported lots of hot water on the beach there, 74 to 76. Bloodworm bite off Doheny, really good. Guy down there had an amberjack outside of the surf line. Small fish, less than 10 pounds, but nonetheless an amberjack. An amberjack no. in the surf no. in the flood outside the surf line. So also a report of Sierra off the Oceanside Pier. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> I'm not this is what Ricky was just geez. saying, I... black skipjack in the kelp. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, I, I was sure that was going to be your, your one, the one of your two species. I know that there was for sure, I mean, I saw the picture of it, a, a black skipjack caught in the IB Pier. Okay, now, let's explain this. Skipjack are not uncommon in Southern California. Black yeah. skipjack are a different species, very uncommon. That's the kind of skipjack you see in Cabo, exactly. the yeah. Rivejejeros Islands, that kind of yeah. stuff. One of, like, the super highly sought-after, you know, baits for yeah. catching, you know, a guy who, in Panama, you're going to catch your black skipjack and then right. bridle it up to catch your thousand pound black right, island. You know, exactly. what I mean, like this isn't something yeah. that we see. And you know, we I was I come into work the other day and the guys are getting off of the half day boat saying, "Oh yeah, we had four of those black skipjacks today." It's like, wait, what? <laughs> it's crazy what's going on. And I know that the dolphin that w- w- was telling us that they caught they had one way inside the kelp, meaning like you know, big you know little channel of of of, uh, yeah. of of open water in the kelp line. They were 50 yards inside the the kelp edge. Fishing calico bass, and somebody had a black skipjack. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Crazy. Yeah, you're seeing the northern. It's like the northernmost of these tropical species are filtering in here. You know, it's pretty darn it's cool, man. Well, Gundy, good it job on a good stuff. report. You better go fishing. Go get one. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Go get us an amberjack, Gundy. We'll, we'll talk to you next Sunday. <laughs> Appreciate the report. All right, Jay. Well, great show. All right, thanks. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and jump on those phones. You want to get through? It's been a busy morning. Have a chance to win that. Waterman pair of Maui Jim sunglasses, the pair that's made for kayakers and, and stand-up paddleboarders. Here's your chance, 858-457-1090, open right now. All right, let's jump right in the phones and talk to Roger. He's calling us from Fullerton this morning. Good morning, Roger. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning. Great show. I still can't get over Guadalupe being opened up and 
Now, Ricky, when you remember this date back, you know, years from now, don't forget how big the Wahoo was. That's that's a big part of the story. <laughs> hey, uh, Roger, while you're on the subject of uh, of Guadalupe, you know, we talked about that one spot on the Royal Star for on a five day, and, and next week it's sold out. So that's done. You're we'll just, just give the you run missed, to... You missed that opportunity, <laughs> okay. but there are still spots available on the Shogun. There's four trips to Guadalupe in November, but they're going very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, for very those quickly. that maybe missed the show yesterday, I mean, just give us a re- rundown of that big announcement that Frank yeah, had yesterday. Yeah, Frank Lopresti announced that they did obtain permits to fish Guadalupe Island, the Shogun, the Royal Polaris, and the Royal Star. And he has put together at, at, to celebrate this and uh, – to, to take advantage of this opportunity, four trips in November on the Shogun. Right. Five and a half day trips, and they're available now on their website, shogunsportfishing.com. You can link that on the Let's Talk Hookup website, hookup1090.com. Go to the links page, long range section, click on Shogun Sport Fishing, and that that would be your opportunity I'll, right there. I'll tell you, like, I was way surprised. Cause I went on last yesterday, too, because I was so curious. I was way shocked at how inexpensive those trips were. Yeah. Because you would figure a five-day trip going to Guadalupe, which hasn't been open in, what, seven, ten years? I mean, we haven't yeah. fished Guadalupe And forever. we know that the fish, because there's been yachts down there, that we know the fishing for yellowfin tuna has been it's off the charts. Off of the charts yeah, for good. Big fish. And, I mean, you figure, you know, a trip like that is going to obtain a premium price. Not the case. No. Less money yeah. than what a, a summertime five-day trip was. And the Shogun, was. what an awesome oh, perfect. boat. perfect. And super wide and a light load and... Captain Aaron Barnhill. I mean, the, I mean, it's, the scenario couldn't be better. So, oh, too. If my you, question for Ron. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Roger. <laughs> we get, we get excited oh, so about excited. that. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Roger. Uh, yeah. What is the material your kayaks are made out of, and what are, what are the weights of the different ones? You know, it, it's a it, now. Get ready for this. Super linear polyethylene. Ooh, Ooh wow, that's I'm fancy. impressed. Yeah, dude. I mean, I can't believe I remembered that. Wow, <laughs> but. But its stuff is durable. I mean, it's like Tupperware. They just don't go away. I had no idea they're going to last this long. We're we getting guys bringing in, you know, eighteen year old Mirage drives to have us repair them. And wow. Yeah, it's just amazing. The, the things just last. Now, weight wise, they've fluctuated over the years because of usage and you know just the way they've learned to build them. So they they've gotten to be. In that, you know, the lighter ones are 60 pounds. The heavier ones are 110. And when you're talking about a So when you're saying 60, what is 60 pounds? Which one? The the sport. The sport, okay. Yeah, the small one. Now, that's for everything. That's the all-equipped. That's right. not the pickup you know, that's weight. what that's what you'd be lifting onto your car. Okay. Because naturally, when you come back to your car, you take the Mirage Drive out, you take the seat out, and the paddle. You put those away in your car. Hopefully, you put yeah. them away in your car. So one of my favorite fishing kayaks is the Outback. And the new Outback is amazing with the new seat and stuff like that. You take all the gear off the Outback, and you lift it up off your car. What's it weigh? About 70 pounds. 70 pounds. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's a nice that kayak. When people ask me how much do they weigh, I say, what's the difference? We don't carry them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you have yeah. equipment. Beach wheels. I mean, yeah. the wheels are, are, they have all these different kinds of beach wheels. This, you know, you've got ones for sidewalks, you've got ones for rocks, pebbles, soft sand. You plug them in, you just, you don't, you, they balance like a little wagon. You just roll them up to your car. Now, once you're at your car, that's what you need next weekend for. We're going to show you how to put them on your car easily. I mean, that's I next it. Saturday, I free it, event at Fast Lane. Yeah. Starting you, at? Well, we'll be there at 9. 9 o'clock. Yeah. And it'll go on o'clock. all day. Yeah, Debbie's going to bring donuts. Oh. We'll probably have homemade cookies oh, and yeah. get some coffee. But the point is is that there's a lot of – I mean, we now we've got a little break in the summer fishing mission action, and we have time to do these little workshops and demos. A lot of guys are going to want, how does that go in my car? And we can show them. How, do, how, how about let me try that that 17-foot pro angler? Well, you and your wife jump in the boat and pedal around a little bit. And 70 pounds may sound a bit heavy, but the way that they put it, rack it, the way that they have the beach wheels, it's nothing. It's almost, it's, it's, you can carry it with one hand. Well, we got smarter yeah. on, on car topping. Exactly. Yeah, you cool. have to get smarter. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Speaking of Guadalupe, Captain Frank Lopresti's on the line. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Pete. I just wanted to report to you that... Uh, 
I saw the uh, Apollo come in yesterday from Guadalupe and uh, that they had a sensational catch of 60 to 90 pound tuna along with a lot of big yellowtail and fish up to 156 pounds, several fish over 100. Oh, man, you're talking so, yellowfin tuna. Right, that's the elephant tuna. And the Shogun will be arriving there later this morning. They're on an eight-day trip. Uh, very, very good fishing over there. So those people that are thinking about one of those five-day trips that we've got going in November, uh, we will be in the office today. And uh, we booked, I believe it was 21 people yesterday. So the trips are going to, looks like they're going to fill very quickly. Yeah, we were just talking about that, Frank. And, and now you've, Sweeten the pot with that fish report. Oh, my, that is good fishing. I yep, think. it's pretty darn exciting. Yeah, so. so your advice to our listeners would be jump on those. And we're, Ricky was just commenting on how you price those so economically. Yes, I did. And, and you know, I could have easily priced those at uh, $500 more. But realizing that we wanted to fill four trips and get a bunch of new people on the boat, that's what we did. So... It's at fourteen hundred ninety-five plus the permits and the visas and uh, part of the uh, the charge for entering customs. The only thing that's different that I told you than yesterday is we received a call and before it was we only had to clear Ensenada on the way back. Now we have to clear on the way down and on the way back. So that's the only difference in the trip. Okay, very good. So that's why a five and a half day trip is that half day basically that, covers that's that. The, so we make sure we get three full days of fishing, and I haven't laid it out yet, but you might get a little bit on that fourth morning. All right, very good. Well, Frank, if somebody wants to book one of those highly <coughs> sought after trips to Guadalupe Island aboard the Shogun, how do we get a hold of you? Well, I'm sitting here in the office now. Six one nine two two six eight zero three zero. I want to go. So bad. Yeah, that too. is yeah. so cool. Yeah. I, I just how cool is it that here we are this morning and we just got a report from Guadalupe Island. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's so good, excited. Good going, Frank. All right, if you want to talk to Frank, book one of those Shogun trips, two two six eight oh three oh six one nine area code oh shogun dot com. Thanks, Frank. Okay, take care of you guys. Right, thanks, Thank Frank. you very much. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cook Up coming your way. More of your phone calls, more great information. You stay tuned, it's Let's Talk Cook Up on the Mighty Ten Ninety. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood, Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium VMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala.
Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x raft Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x raft Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x raft Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire line at Rapala.com. The best NFL coverage is right here. Caught inside the pylon for a touchdown. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Saturday, November 7th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. It's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts, incredible deals on tackle, closeouts we've never offered before, plus 20 tackle manufacturers' representatives like Shimano, with great reels like Talica, Tranks, Trinidad A, and Twin Power. We will also have a great selection of the new Terramar rods by Shimano. Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing will have unbelievable pricing on tackle, clothing, and and accessories. There is also a huge raffle. Best ever tackle bargains at Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 7th. Check saltwatertackle.com. Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. Now is the time to book your long-range trips and charters, plus half-day trips aboard the Dolphin. Go to fisherman'slanding.com and see trip availability and even book your trip online. Stop by or call Fisherman's Landing in San Diego and book now at fisherman'slanding.com. The summer fishing season this year was nothing short of incredible. Incredible. And everyone I talk to is expecting continued success well into the fall season. Your San Diego County Ford dealers are having a remarkable summer, too, with no sign of slowing down. They continue to hook people up with a great selection of models that offer outstanding MPG and advanced technology, like the fun-to-drive Focus and the popular Fusion, available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Ford also has an impressive list of SUVs, like Escape. Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Well, no matter what you need, Ford has an SUV for you. And for serious fishermen that have boats to haul and gear to move, you can't beat the Ford F-150. It's not only stronger than ever, it's 700 pounds lighter, so it's faster and more efficient. Bottom line, Ford cars and trucks and SUVs are built for San Diego. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. 